Hey, it's Melina. I'm here at the Genzio Media House during ETH Denver. Today, I'm joined by Christoph from Threefold. They like to say that Threefold is the next generation of the internet. Find out why. So share with me your story because you built this company not yesterday, right? <laughs> A long time ago. So talk to me. What is your story? Well, look, I love the internet. Let's start with that. Yes. I think the internet is one of the nicest things which happened to humanity, but it all didn't go in one good direction. As well. mm -hmm. So I got very passionate about that. Like, how can we make a better internet and resolve of some of the plumbing issues, let's say, better storage and computer networking. But how did I get there? So when I came out of university, that was when the internet started. And it was this wonderful time where money was no issue. You could, uh, you could do anything. Um, it was really wonderful. So about like 10, 12 years ago, I just had some exits and um, I found my new wife and all of that. And I was like, what am I going to do? I mean, <laughs> just keep on doing what I'm doing or will I use what I have created before to build something the world needs? And that's how we came up with this idea. So how can we help to restore the internet to its original intent, which is much more peer to peer and everyone can freely express what they want. Uh, we literally are no longer products. That's kind of what we wanted to do. Well, I want you to maybe share with us, like how was the internet, what, 30 years ago? Like, how many years is it now? Uh, too long. <laughs> too long? So what, what, what's the main difference? Like what are you seeing from when the internet was created to now? Like what are you seeing? What are the gaps? Like where's the misconnect? Mm. Well, the internet was, it came out of universities, it came out of military, it was literally like so many groups of different types of people were just connecting their effort to build something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. right? It was like this ability of we're going to share with each other, no one was thinking about security, it was all about giving. Mm -hmm. What can I give to something bigger than me so we create something which is relevant to all of us. Yeah. And it was very peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, the, the original protocols were peer-to-peer. There were, how can I uh, share um, information? How can we connect over email? It was all very well done, actually. And no one was worried about anything. It had this like magic. Oh, how can I find something? How can I... It was I... fun. It was fun. Exciting. Uh, it was very exciting. And somewhere that started shifting a little bit when mm. web became more commercial and there was more money to be made and that brought in other interests as well, right? And we became, now we're more like a product to that big thing rather than recreating it. We don't even know anymore what, what information is real. Um, there is a huge imbalance too. Most countries don't even have their internet. Mm -hmm. So we lost a little bit this original intent. And what our hope is, and also our passion, how can we restore that playfulness that we create some, and with the eye now, I think it's possible. Because it's a little bit the same thing, you know? It's like, oh, we can create something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we're very excited to see how we can do that. How can the internet be better? I know it's like a tough question, mm -hmm. but can it be better? Oh, yeah. So easy. Well, look, the internet at the end is yeah, it's connections of people. That's what it should be. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what's changing now a little bit. More than 80% of the content right now is machine generated. And that to me is a little bit sad. It, and, and many people believe that we need to protect the internet by going anonymous. And I believe the reverse. I believe the internet or AI also needs to be an extension of humans. Because humans were beautiful. I mean, it's, it's about creativity. It's about using, um, let's say, things beyond the mind. How can we use the internet and AI to build that again and make that different? But for that, we need to change the mentality a little bit. Mm. Right? We need to get out of this idea that nothing can be changed. Um, that it's all just about we being part as a product almost. So we need to take it back to ourselves. And no, no, we can change the internet. We can give our content, but we need to also accept to take responsibility to share our own information, to tell our stories, but in a way that they're authentic, not try to game it, right? Yes. Now too many people try to game it. It's like, oh, it's like a game. And how can I game it to my own benefit? So why not go back to, no, it's not about me gaming it to my benefit. It's about me giving something to the advancement of myself and the people around me. So it's like a shift. Um, let's call it a hippie movement in, uh, <laughs> in the internet. So what would you say, what are you hoping to, to achieve now with threefold? You know, people watching this, they want to join or they feel empowered. Yeah. How can they participate? Yeah, well, look, we, it's different layers, uh, but we need to start with the plumbing layer. 
it's maybe not the most sexy layer, but at the end we still need it. So we need compute, we need storage, we need GPUs, we need more network connectivity. So we've built this mechanism to make it super simple for people to participate, um, build a computer themselves and connect it to a network of like-minded people. And we need to go from the couple of thousand nodes we have now to like millions of nodes. So it really needs to grow if you want to be a true alternative to what the internet is today. So it starts with this base layer, connecting all these computers. Um, and I think our claim to fame is, if you want to say it like that, we managed to make it very simple. So you don't have to be uh, a serious engineer to be able to contribute. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everyone can do it. You can buy a computer somewhere. It's bare metal. It means that it's not like running on the computer you already have. You literally have to dedicate a machine for it. But the benefits are huge. We then together own our own digital future. We can create something which we sometimes call augmented collective intelligence. Right? It's not like we are going to be replaced by a machine. It's more like how can we create our own network of knowledge to basically extend ourselves. And that's an exciting journey, starting with the boxes. And then after that, it will be all about how can we use these new applications on top of these boxes to extend our knowledge and to learn from each other. How can we achieve this? Is this achievable? Do you oh, think? It's absolutely yes? achievable. Let me say much more than that. This Please. will be done. Uh, no is simply not an option. We're working on it. It's our life's work, you know. We're extremely passionate about it as a group and many uh, supporters around us. Uh, no, this will happen. There's, there's just no other way. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? If you want to survive, you got to build a house. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the Gen Z Media House. Oswald, thanks so much for joining us today.